Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news report today. My website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube, my channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko 2013 The videos, I'm not sure if they're playing for you um, my, for my website. Uh, just uh, let me know. I can't really see them, but I'm seeing that there's a view count on them, so I don't know if somebody is going in there and they're counting that or what, but... Um, if you could uh, give us some help, I'd appreciate it. Um, you can do that through uh, through my website. All right, first article I have up is about Cyprus. We're going to talk about the economy and then end up with eugenics again. So Cyprus rejects bailout plan that would make uh, savers pay, raising anxiety in the eurozone. So it says here that lawmakers in Cyprus on Tuesday rejected a bailout plan that would have rescued the country's banks but forced savers to chip in for the cost, throwing down a gauntlet to the rest of Europe over the financial fate of the tiny island nation. I guess what it comes down to is do you want to have your money stolen through taxes to pay for this bailout, or do you want to have your money stolen directly from your, from your private uh, banking checking account, right? I mean, that's the real debate here. <laughs> Whatever it's worth, though, they rejected it, so that was interesting because they had put it off yesterday. Cyprus banks will stay closed until Thursday. Banks in Cyprus will remain closed until East Thursday while talks continue over the controversial plans to put a levy on savers' deposits. So it says here that um, the, uh, the country's bailout saw depositors rush to cash machines, which soon ran out of funds, a bank run, right? Ministry of Defense files emergency cash to Cyprus for British personnel. Personnel. Remember we are talking about how they had intelligence um, facilities in Cyprus, Britain. The money is to be used for British personnel and their uh, families if cash machines and debit cards stop working. UK officials said a plane carrying the money had arrived in Cyprus. Survey says anti-EU UKIP surges in polls. So you, I guess that's the independent party. New poll has confirmed that the surge in support of the anti-European um, independence party. So it says here that Com Res poll for the independent on Sunday and Sunday mirror revealed that the independent party has garnered record support of 17% in the UK. It says the campaign has repeatedly warned of a flood of arrivals from Bulgaria and Romania from January 2014 when citizens of the EU's two poorest countries will be able to work in Britain freely. Ditch austerity, Angela Merkel and David Cameron are told EU leaders meeting in Brussels are under pressure from growing popular anger. You know, there's been these uh, immolations, people just setting themselves on fire. It says as popular discontent spreads across Europe, David Cameron and Angela Merkel will come under pressure from EU leaders tomorrow to signal an end to the all austerity approach to the economic crisis. City to workers. Bring your own toilet paper, says budget cuts got personal in Windsor, Missouri. Congratulations to the guys in the public works department of tiny Windsor, Missouri. They can start or stop bringing their own toilet paper to work. It seems an overzealous bean counter determined that men were using way too much and cut them off entirely. The mayor and city council learned of it when a concerned citizen came forward at a council meeting and asked to start a fundraiser to pay for the guy's relief. I was just really incredulous that this was a topic to be brought up at a city hall meeting, much less have any truth to it, says the mayor. So the council quickly resorted, uh, restored funding. And the link should be posted in YouTube's video description. You can watch this video. Banks are just a few rate hikes from insolvency, says uh, Peter Schiff. On closing bell this afternoon, says here, um, one of the buy side tool, tools exclaims, I think everyone agrees TARP save the banking system. Schiff responds, the banks aren't even, are in the worst shape they've ever been. They are just a few interest rates from insolvency. U.S. bankers tell the U.S. depositors, don't panic, nothing to see here. So this is from Zero Hedge while we explain exactly why there is a possibility of a European style wealth tax in the United States. It appears the American Banking Association has decided to put out fires early. While well, the crisis in Cyprus is a real concern for the depositors in that country's banks, it has no implication for depositors in the U.S. institutions. Depositors in the U.S. banks are insured up to $250,000, and no insured depositor has ever lost money in a bank failure. The U.S. banking industry has rapidly returned to health with strong earnings, lower losses, and significant increase in capital. It says here, simply put, U.S. insured depositors are safe and their deposits are protected by a strong FDIC fund.
I don't know if I agree with that, though, because the whole 2008, 2009, quote, economic crisis, the recession, um, they actually, they had to be bailed out, I believe, wasn't it? The FDIC was running out of money. Chase Bank customers report seeing drained accounts. The internal glitch has been fixed. Customers took their frustration and fears to Twitter. Many Chase Bank customers logged into their bank accounts Monday evening to find a horrifying figure, zero dollars. The major bank reported a reported via Twitter that the internal issue causing customers to see zeroed out accounts online and on the bank's mobile application has been fixed as of 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, about three hours after the bank acknowledged the problem or internal glitch. It's like when their websites go down and people can't do any transactions. That's what we call a de facto um, bank run. So French minister tasked with fighting tax fraud resigns for having a Swiss secret Swiss account. So it goes on here and it says that um, this uh, Shuhazak resigned for the same reason he had been investigated several months ago, namely having an undisclosed Swiss bank account. So he resigns for having a secret account. It's nice. 57% of U.S. workers have less than $25,000 in savings. New survey suggests retirement trouble looms for nation. Points to a double whammy in terms of retirement savings. People aren't saving enough and they're living longer. Among the depressing nuggets, well, they don't have savings because whatever they do have goes to paying off the debt to their medical bills so that they can live longer, right? Well, to do that, they're going to have to what? They're going to have to work longer. 28% of Americans don't think that they'll be able to retire comfortably. 57% of workers have less than 25000 in household savings, not including their homes. That's up from 49%. 66% of workers say they have saved for retirement, down from 75% in 2009. Only f about 50% were sure they could quickly have $2,000 in hand to pay for an unexpected emergency. So uh, everybody's, people are going to be living longer if they can't pay these medical debts. I guarantee that. You know, it's the, the days of, you know, people taking care of their families and that. And, you know, you, when you're done, you're done. That Those days are over. You know, you're going to work until you're dead unless you have some kind of lucrative savings, unless you, you know, you chase the carrot long enough and um, you were able to stash away enough. And, you know, you, that wasn't looted. And the same people that do the looting, like the Federal Reserve System and these banks, what they don't uh, mess up your your purchasing power so much that uh, that you know you save up you know let's say you know fifty thousand dollars and then when you actually get to wanting to use it it's actually worth like twenty thousand dollars as far as how much you can purchase you know, it's another hidden tax but this is uh, this is what it's all about right uh, because people don't have time to take care of their their elderly parents anymore and keep them in the house and. Uh, you know, because the wife isn't going to be there to take care of it, and she's going to be out at work. So, and so this is what this is. This is the end result. It's a, it's a very sad thing. It's something that I don't look forward to um, when I get to that age. Man shoots and kills wife and self. An elderly man shot and killed his 83 year old wife in an Eastern Pennsylvania hospice unit Tuesday, then turned the gun on himself. So he must have been a result of that new policy uh, that just basically starves them to death without actually killing and euthanizing them. Staff members heard gunshots on the fourth floor at the hospital. When they entered the room, uh, shots were fired. Where the shots were fired, they found the woman dead in her bed along with the body of a man. So it appears to be a murder or suicide involving a husband and a wife. So it says, like most hospitals, they don't use metal detectors, so there's a lack of security. It's not a lack of just something in our society where we look out after our elderly and not just dump them in homes. Viral eugenesis announced mass die-off, says in a report published in April of 2012 by the Royal Society titled People and the Planet, the elitist UK-based society calls for massive population reduction and de-industrialization through uh, climate change and carbon taxes and that of the West. However, drenched in euphemisms, the report could not conceal its ominous undertones. Listed among its key recommendations, the report proposes several measures uh, similar to the one put out recently by MIT in which drastic reduction of the population is called for in the name of modeling and predictions. So after they released its call for more death and megacities, none other than Paul Ehrlich weighed in on to regurgitate his own eugenics uh, fancies or fantasies. They reported that uh, Ehrlich, who contributes to the report, eagerly endorses the conclusions in regards to redistributing wealth. Ehrlich is quite upfront about his opinion on the matter. 
So he says the population resources multiply together. You have to deal with them together. We have too much consumption among the rich and too little among the poor. That implies that terrible thing that we're going to have to do with, which is to somehow uh, redistribute excess to resources away from the rich to the poor. So it goes on about resources. We don't have enough. So we have to humanely and rapidly as possibly move to population shrinkage. So it says here, when the Royal Society terms systematically decoupling economic activity from environmental impact by reducing waste and stuff and increasing efficiency, it's actually a rephrasing of Agenda 21's plan to gradually deindustrialize the West, as well as a creation of megacities in which the bulk of the world's population could be locked up to make more manageable. They call it the potential for urbanization to reduce material consumption. So we see scary stuff like this, right, all the time. U.S. could suffer Katrina every other year. Major storm surges could happen 10 times as often by century's end. New study offers a dire warning about climate change. Hurricanes like Katrina could be commonplace by century's end. Never mind the fact that they're spraying chemtrails and aerosols and modifying the weather, creating these super storms and supercell storms, killing people and wreaking havoc on people's livelihoods and their futures. Just worry about climate change. This means there will be more of a Katrina magnitude storm surge every other year because you drive your car to your job. The great green con, the hard proofs that finally show global warming, forecasts that are costing you billions were wrong all along. No, the world isn't getting warmer, as you may have noticed. Now we reveal the official data that's making scientists suddenly change their minds about climate doom. So will eco-funded MPs and eco-terrorists, as they call them, or fascists, waging a green crusade with your money. So they, so it says here that on Sunday, the Mail online presented irrefutable evidence that official predictions of global climate, uh, yeah, global warming, have been catastrophically flawed. It blows apart the scientific basis for Britain reshaping its entire economy and spending billions in taxes and subsidies in order to cut emissions and greenhouse gases. This is what we were just talking about. These moves have already added 100 pounds a year to household energy bills. Graph shows evidence and details uh, the speed of global warming has been massively overestimated, says they've had ruinous impact on the bills that they pay from heating to car fuel to huge sums paid by councils to reduce carbon emissions. So an internationally renowned uh, IPCC scientist professor uh, now postpones warm winters by up to 100 years. So it goes on here and it says that David Veneer made a famous snowfalls are now a thing of the past in 2000. This professor uh, from Germany tells the Spiegel days later there aren't going to be winters with strong frost and lots of snow at our latitudes anymore like 20 years. Today as Germany reels from its fifth cold of the normal winter in a row, a record, his words are uh, sounding hollow. This individual, uh, Latif or Latif, says warming has been small so far. There's other statements like this. Uh, he now postpones warm winters by up to 100 years, saying recent cold winters are just weather. It's the cause is completely normal chaos of the weather. And whatever else they're doing, warming has stopped, but is taking place in the background. Accelerated warming is just around the corner. So it says British government abandons climate change education for children under the age of 14. Debate about climate change has been cut out of the national curriculum for children under 14, prompting claims of uh, political interference in the syllabus by the government that has failed our duty to future generations. So they failed them because they're not going to propaganda, use propaganda in the schools, right? Teach them uh, uh, pseudoscience. The move has caused alarm among climate alarmists saying that teaching about climate change in schools has helped mobilize young people to be the most vociferous advocates of action by government. So that's what they want. They want to use them to be their little, uh, to be their little uh, eco-fascists. Climate change science poised to enter nation's classroom. Classrooms, new standards recommend teaching man-made global warming in all science classes, some textbook publishers to incorporate curriculum immediately. I believe this is in the U.S. Infections with nightmare bacteria are on the rise in U.S. hospitals. It says and doctors have to use antibiotics more carefully, give them more antibiotics to prevent more germs from developing into dangerous superbugs. So keep using more antibiotics so that their uh, immune system is weakened so they can't fight superbugs. Tests of anthrax vaccine in children gets okay. So presidential ethics panels open the door to testing, experimenting on children as young as infants with the uh, anthrax vaccine. The Philly doc accused of stabbing fetuses, his lawyer says, the murder trial is a racist lynching. Church refuses to perform straight weddings until same-sex marriage is legal. High school bans girl from wearing tuxes to prom. prom. 
It's an example of anti-LGB bull. Madonna kisses Anderson Cooper. Yuck.